That was his way of getting control. No, Good no. Job. You're, yeah, it was. Great. No, I learned a lot, Gary. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, told Don't. me a lot of things in March. I was in Australia, so I didn't hear it. But uh. That was good. Yeah, I got pissed because you put my name in an article in the header and no one asked me for my opinion. Well, that's because we get a lot of readers when we put your name there. Okay. I, Gary, you got to sit down. I'm going to get, come on, just sit down. Yeah, I'm going to do one more thing. Okay. Boy, oh boy, was there fireworks between Gary Keller and Brad Inman. The real estate world blew up last week talking about this interview, and we will post the link to the full interview in the chat log below. It's a must watch. It's about 30 minutes. Watch it when you get home, grab a drink, get in bed and watch it, it's good. The overall theme is something that has been on all of our minds, the future of this great real estate industry. Obviously, there's a tech theme throughout. Now, what you'll find is Gary, like most leaders and innovators, is polarizing. Very few in the middle, it's basically love him or hate him. And I wanna talk about the latter for a second because the Notorious Rob wrote a crazy article in, the, in response to this interview titled, Stages of Decline, the Keller Williams edition which is a provocative statement when you consider K-Dub is still number one in agent count, units, and volume. I happen to know several K-Dub people and they have some awesome people over there, but back to the article. I know I'm covering a lot here, but stay with me. The link to the lengthy scathing article is below as well. It's a must read. Notorious Rob states that Gary Keller is in the five stages of decline, which he quotes are number one, hubris born of success. Number two, undisciplined pursuit of more. Number three, denial of risk and peril. Number four, grasping for salvation. I mean, number five, capitulation to irrelevance or death. Damn. <laughs> Rob also stated that quite a few companies and organizations in real estate are somewhere on this curve. Now, I don't agree with much of this article, but that last part is true about companies being somewhere on this curve, lenders even more so. Now, here's the deal. I initially heard about this fiery interview, then I read this article, and then I watched it for myself. And I understand why people are all fired up, but I don't know that the leader of Keller Williams is in the five stages of decline. I mean, what do you guys think? I actually agree with several of Gary's points. Sure. Several people thought he was rude or demeaning to Brad, but the guy's fighting for his life and the life of his agents, so I get the passion that comes across. Now, I didn't agree with everything he said, but he makes some good points about owning your own technology. He brought up tech giants like Amazon, Netflix, Apple, Facebook, and pointed out that all these companies built and own their own software. Let me ask you a question. Does Amazon own their software or do they buy it from Fidelity? Uh, they own it. I Does Amazon own their software or do they buy it from pick a company? I don't know. You tell me. I don't know. You know the answer. Well, I assume they Amazon do. owns their software. Facebook owns their software. Yes? Yeah. Net Netflix owns their software, right? Yeah. Okay. So why would we tell the real estate agent, don't own your software? Great point and really the Achilles heel for the entire real estate and lending world. See, real estate companies and lenders know that they need tech but they are not tech companies themselves. No matter what they tell you, what they profess or claim to be, they simply aren't tech companies. So what do they do? Well, they purchase tech and plug and play it. The challenge then is integration. And Gary Keller talks about this. Integration is tough and can leave holes, gaps and inefficiencies. Companies that don't own their software must purchase several different types of software and work really hard to get all these systems to talk to each other point of purchase software, LOS software, which is loan operating software for lenders, um, an app to find homes if you're a realtor, a CRM to aggregate and sort out all the data, storage and cloud-based services, secondary or delivery software if you're a lender. And the list goes on. And because we are either lenders or realtors, 99% of us don't know how to build this stuff from scratch. Can integration be done successfully? Yes, but few have pulled it off. Gary Keller is talking about investing into software development and owning it all soup to nuts. Easier said than done because you need deep pockets and a big innovative staff to build, test, and deploy it all. But this is how the tech giants are thriving, so Gary Keller is on the right path. Many of his haters would say he's too late, and maybe so, but then you'd have to say the same thing about the rest of the industry, which is true. Our industry started to evolve way too late, both lenders and realtors. It's honestly why most lenders and realtors won't make it out of 2018, and you can quote that, and even fewer will see 2020. The tech piece is just one small nugget in the 30 minute interview. There are several others, including discounting agent commissions, big data, the future, KW Mortgage, and even Gary Keller's thoughts on EXP, which is interesting. You gotta watch it. Oh, and Brad Inman basically calls him out for being a fear monger 
and calls him out for making a deal with Zillow. And then Gary Keller snaps back and tells him to listen up and get an education. <laughs> Yikes, it was crazy. What do you guys think? I want to hear from K-Dub people and other agents and lenders and K-Dub people. We know you're going to have his back, as you should. But be honest with your thoughts. Either way, good, bad, or indifferent. Let the debate begin below. Gary Keller, still a genius or past his prime? Great job, Gary and Brad. Awesome content, and we'll see you guys next week. How many think Gary's book is as relevant today as it was when he wrote it, and how many think it is not? One, one caveat. You have to put your income down by your answer. Okay, well, let's... Because, <laughs> because, because I will tell you that anybody, that anybody who would say that it's yeah. not relevant today are your least earning people My in the audience room. has a higher income than your community, Gary, because they paid a lot to come here. And, but anyway.